Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vincent. I'm Army Veteran. And today we're going to talk about the pride flag at the VA campus irking Republican lawmakers. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can find more content from Vet Talk only or here on YouTube. And if you're a veteran and would love to share your story, a resource for veterans and non-veterans who would love to share your resource for veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. So again, today we're talking about the pride flag at the VA campuses, irk Republican lawmakers. So just so that you know, I am not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm more a conser- I'm more of a conservative. Um, although I don't really affiliate myself with any political party movement or any of that as a believer, because I'm just a firm believer in the Bible and Jesus Christ. So I stick to what I know and I don't try to get into other things that may be touchy to some people, because as a um, man of God, I'm taught through scripture not to, um, basically get into arguments with people. And I know and understand that a lot of times when you talk about these subjects, they cause a lot of arguments and infighting. So again, this actual video is not me arguing, fussing, fighting, but just going over what's going on out there in the veteran news. So basically um, Republicans are expressing their frustration over the display of a pride flag at the VA campus. The move has been seen as a political statement by some, while others argue that it is simply a way to show support to the LGBTQ veterans. The issue has become particularly contentious in recent weeks, with some lawmakers calling for the flag to be removed and others insisting that they should be allowed to remain. Many veterans have also weighed in on the issues, with some expressing their support for the display of the pride flag and others arguing that they are inappropriate on veteran grounds. At the heart of the debate is the question of whether or not to display the pride flag constitutes a political statement. Some argues that it does, pointing out that the LGBT community is often associated with left-leaning politics. Others argue that it is simply a way to show support for a marginalized group of veterans. Regardless of where one stands on this issue, it is clear that the display of a applied flag at the VA campus has sparked a heated debate. Some lawmakers have even gone as far as to introduce legislation aimed to ban the display of such flag on veteran or VA grounds. As the debate continues to rage on, it remains to be seen what the ultimate outcome will be. Will the pride flag be allowed to remain at the VA campus or will they ban it altogether only time will tell. So my stance when it comes to the LGBT community is biblical. And I just really want to take you to first Timothy. A lot of times people believe that as Christians, we are judging people when we make certain statements, but it's just like the laws of the land. You stand by what the law says. And if you oppose it, then you're in violation of those laws. And now you put yourself in a situation where you are a violator of the law and there's punishment due to that. So when it comes to me as a believer, I have to stand on what the word of God says. I can't go based off of feelings. I can't go based off of emotions. I have to do exactly what the word of God says do. Is that to say that I'm perfect? No, but that's why I have God's grace. Because I'm not perfect, I don't, I'm not righteous, but Jesus Christ, the one that I believe in, he's righteous. So I live off of his righteousness. So here in first Timothy, um, the first chapter, ninth through the 11th verse, it said, notice that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for a lawless and disobedient, for ungodly and for sinners and for unholy and profane, for murders of fathers and murders of mothers, for man slayers for homemongers for them that defile themselves with mankind for man stealers for liars for perjurer perjure pe- persons and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine according to the glorious gospel of the blessed god which was committed to my trust so as you look here in the new international version it breaks down 
basically all of these people and what the Bible was talking about. So I'm going to start with the 10th verse. It said, for the sex of immorale, for those who practice homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. So again, God's law prohibits us from doing any of these things, man. For us, you know, it prohibits it prohibits us from doing any of these things. So when it comes to me being in support of the LGBT as a believer, I couldn't do it. I mean, as a man who has a son, I couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't see myself supporting something that I know is not only not good health-wise, but is an opposition of what I believe. So I couldn't support it at, at the end of the day. And... I would say that, you know, um, so I would say that I'm against um, sin and I stand on God's side when it comes to righteousness, but I'm not the one that's going to go around and beat down the LGBT community because I understand that the unrighteous will be judged by God. And we as believers are to correct those within the church, according to first Corinthians, the fifth chapter verses 11 through 13, which is where I'm going to take you to now. And I'm going to show you what the scripture actually says so that you can have a clear understanding from the word of God as to my stance. Because again, I stand with the word of God. And it says, but I um now, but now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or either a riler or a drunkard or an extortioner with such as such a one not to eat. First Corinthians fifth chapter verses 11 through 13. But now I am writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but is a sexual immoral, greedy, or idolater, or slander, or drunk, or swindler, do not even eat with such. What business is it mine to judge those outside of the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. So right here, this scripture makes it clear that God is the one who's doing the judging of those who are outside of the church. So again, that's why I won't go around bashing people who live in opposition to what I do. The people that I'm going to check is those brothers or sisters that I know are supposed to be a part of the faith and they're doing things that are contrary to it. Now, I understand as a brother, you know, the Bible says for me to, um, you know, if I catch my brother in sin, that I'm supposed to restore him in the spirit of meekness. You know, um, so, you know, that's part of it. But at the end of the day, if this person continues to go about, you know, doing the wrong thing and not trying to, you know, get this self together, then it's my job as a believer or the church's job to expel that person, which means put them out, you know, because at the end of the day, certain things just can't be tolerated in the church. And there has to be a separation, you know, from. You know, certain things is it, God's law is is mandated. It's not something that we can pick and choose. And the reason why I'm talking about all this stuff and, you know, showing you the biblical perspective, because I want you to know where I stand. But also, I hate the fact that now instead of it just being veteran rights, it's turning into men versus women or straight versus LGBTQ. When doing our time in the military, we were all in one boat fighting and defending our country as United States military personnel within each branch of service. So I believe they need to keep the main thing, the main thing and stick to helping veterans and letting, um, and, and, and let's not make no difference between, you know, all the different categories, which in the end will reduce veteran funding for all veterans because there are too many groups that need funding. And that's the bigger picture that I look at is, um, that there's a lot of different, Things that are, you know, happening right now with them, you know, taking away, I think it was um like $3 billion or $35 billion. I, it was some astronomical number 
of um, amount of money that they took away from veterans because, you know, there's so many different programs. And the reason why there are so many different programs from my own perspective, and I'm not saying this is actual factual, but what I believe is because there's so many different parties that has to be paid. And when you got too many people fighting for all of these different things, somewhere along the lines, things are going to be taken from. And I believe that the main thing should be the main thing. If there are veterans who have service related issues, we need to stick to that, not, you know, pay for people to get sex changed. Because to me, to be honest to you, that's not service related. That's more personal. That's more something that a person wants personally. I have nothing against people who want to do that as far as them doing that. If you want to do it, do it with your own money. Do it on your own time. But when it comes to veteran benefits and veteran rights, let's stick to the main thing. The main thing is helping veterans. And although there may be LGBTQ members that are veterans, okay, let's keep it at veterans. Let's not make it about straight. Let's not make it about gay. Let's not make it about men. Let's not make it about women. Let's keep it at the core, the core of veteran benefits, veterans receiving help, veterans getting their needs met veterans not black not white not asian not mexican let's stick to the main thing because when we all fought when we all put on that uniform we serve as people within units groups companies not as individuals we set we serve as members of a team not as individuals. So let's keep the main thing the main thing. Let's not get distracted by all of these different sensitive topics that cause arguments and quotes because together we stand, divided we fall. So this has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince, Vet Talk. As always, Vet Talk out. <laughs>